So I went out and I said, officer, officer, grab him. Stop him, stop him. But I couldn't scream. I wanted to scream, Bishop, drop your, go down. But I couldn't. I was just too rapidly. The attack on Pastor Gino Jennings' wife within the sacred space of their church underscores the volatile intersection of religious fervor, personal vendettas, and community dynamics. This incident, which escalated to the point of endangering their youngest daughter, highlights the challenges faced by religious leaders and their families who are constantly in the public eye. The physical altercation was not just an isolated act of violence, but a manifestation of deeper underlying tensions. These tensions have roots in the provocative and often controversial nature of Jennings' ministry, as well as in the personal grievances held by individuals within and outside the church community. This essay explores the multifaceted aspects of this incident, from the immediate events and their repercussions to the broader implications for the church, the Jennings family, and the religious community at large. Uh, there was a woman that used to be in the church, went out there with all these needles in her arm. Never forget, she was sitting to my right. My youngest son, Brother Malcolm Malik, Malcolm Malik Jennings, he wasn't born yet. The youngest baby was Persia. She was sitting on Dottie's lap. It was sitting in the back. And then the girl started cussing while I'm preaching. Kept interrupting the service. I said, all right now. All right, you better be quiet or we're going to escort you out. The girl mother sitting there wouldn't do nothing. So I told the mother, I'm, I'm live over there. I said, would well, you get your daughter yeah. and get her quiet? And she's the mother just sitting looking at me like she don't know what to do. So I told her brother, listen, you get off the keyboard and you go get your sister and get her quiet. I went back preaching again. She yelled out again, F you, Pastor Jennings. We kept preaching, kept preaching. F you, Pastor Jennings. I said, all right, it's time for her to go. On Sunday, July 7, 2024, the congregation of Pastor Gino Jennings Church gathered for worship, unaware of the impending turmoil. During the service, a woman, seemingly agitated and driven by intense emotions, physically assaulted Pastor Jennings' wife. The attack was swift, catching many by surprise, and it quickly escalated the tension within the church. Members of the congregation reacted with a mix of shock, fear, and anger. In the ensuing chaos, the safety of Jennings' youngest daughter became a critical concern as she was caught in the vicinity of the altercation. Recognizing the imminent danger, family members and church security personnel swiftly intervened, escorting the assailant out and ensuring the immediate protection of the Jennings family. This violent outburst did not occur in a vacuum. Pastor Gino Jennings' ministry is known for its uncompromising and often confrontational stance on various social and theological issues. Jennings' sermons frequently challenge established religious doctrines, critique moral failings within the church, and address contentious topics head. While this approach has garnered him a dedicated following, it has also attracted significant criticism and animosity. The woman's attack can be seen as an extreme manifestation of these underlying tensions, reflecting the broader discord that can arise within a community when deeply held beliefs and personal grievances intersect. For the Jennings family, the attack had immediate and long-lasting implications. Physically, Pastor Jennings' wife needed medical attention and emotional support to recover from the trauma. Psychologically, the incident left a deep scar, not only on her but also on their youngest daughter, who witnessed the violence up close. The family had to grapple with the dual challenge of addressing their personal trauma while maintaining their public roles within the church. This incident forced them to reconsider their security measures and personal interactions within the community, balancing their commitment to ministry with the need to protect their personal well-being. The church community, too, was significantly impacted by the incident. For many congregants, the attack was a jarring reminder of the potential dangers inherent in any public religious gathering, especially one led by a figure as polarizing as Pastor Jennings. The church leadership had to address the congregation's concerns, reinforce security protocols, and provide pastoral care to those traumatized by the event. Additionally, the incident sparked a broader conversation within the church about the nature of religious leadership, the responsibilities of congregants, and the need for a safe and respectful environment for worship. She ran through the aisle and targeted my wife. Right. My wife sitting there holding my daughter, who was a baby. If she would have had a knife, 
she would have got five or seven clear stabs on my wife. Yep. She went and started attacking my wife, and my wife went down to protect our youngest daughter and took the blows. But then my youngest daughter hit the floor. That's when I saw the back of my wife. The media coverage of the attack further complicated the situation. News outlets quickly picked up the story, often sensationalizing the violence and scrutinizing Jennings' ministry. Public perception was divided. Supporters rallied behind the Jennings family, expressing outrage and calling for justice, while critics used the incident to highlight what they saw as the inherent issues within Jennings' approach to ministry. This polarized reaction in the public sphere mirrored the divisions within the church community, amplifying the already intense emotions surrounding the incident. From a theological perspective, the attack prompted deeper reflections on the nature of forgiveness, justice, and community within the church. Pastor Jennings, known for his strong doctrinal positions, now faced the challenge of addressing personal violence within his own family. The church community had to navigate the delicate balance between extending forgiveness to the assailant and seeking justice for the wrongs committed. Socially, the incident highlighted the vulnerabilities of religious leaders and their families, raising questions about the pressures they face and the support structures needed to protect them. In the long term, the attack on Pastor Jennings' wife had several consequences. The church implemented stricter security measures, including increased presence of security personnel during services and events, to prevent similar incidents. The Jennings family took steps to ensure their personal safety while maintaining their commitment to their ministry. On a broader scale, the incident served as a cautionary tale for religious communities, emphasizing the importance of addressing underlying tensions and providing adequate support for leaders and their families. It also sparked ongoing dialogue about the role of religious leaders, the responsibilities of congregants, and the need for a harmonious and secure worship environment. You had no idea. The folks was being handcuffed and called the police to have them arrested, yeah. take them out, throw them in jail. You had no idea. No idea. Amen. So we don't have, we don't carry guns, we don't carry switchblades, no. but we ain't let nobody come in here and disrupt or threaten God's people. That's right. The attack on Pastor Gino Jennings' wife within their church was a moment of crisis that revealed the complexities and challenges faced by religious leaders and their communities. It underscored the volatile nature of religious leadership, especially for those who adopt a confrontational and provocative approach to ministry. The incident highlighted the need for robust security measures, the importance of pastoral care, and the enduring relevance of theological reflections on forgiveness and justice. For the Jennings family and their congregation, it was a pivotal moment that tested their faith, resilience, and commitment to their mission. For the broader religious community, it served as a reminder of the potential dangers inherent in religious leadership and the ongoing need for vigilance, support, and dialogue.